today's last books. How we look to the rest of town. It's a real honor to be able to be here for 100,000 volts of change. Thank you for everyone for making this possible. We're going to do this quickly, and I'm going to read a poem real fast, and I'm going to introduce some of our other fine authors. We're going to uh, introduce some of our other fine authors. This is called 1500 Hours. The afternoon sun bathes the thousand miles of eld tranquility. The birds chatter away, marking no disturbances in the garden. The mournful cry of a red winged bird flying lost in the blue skies. Plotting, planning, exploring. What was next? What am I? What was I? Curiously unfeeling, her shade eyes look over the possessions of her home, attempting to discern what was absent from these seasonal necessities. The consciousness that bound all of these obscurities and cliches together was overgrowth, a hermit woman who escaped her life in the words of others, who loved too much, loved too little, an unborn child swimming in springs. Her midnight immateriality was itself an icy success of accumulation, a life of summer trees obscuring the war rallies her country entertained, a severance of the self from painted still life, an ice cream cone and its cone. Looking at the red trees, she loses track of the looming presence of invisible gases rustling in temperature and fission pressures. Fusion, manipulation, questions of failure or success, fashion choices. The scent of sarsaparilla, Coke bottle eyeglasses, allowances, space, winter. The weather is already warm. The ground should be frozen. Fallen leaves on the pathway to the home of no one, of one no longer there. Thank you. Next up is Jared Shigley. Jared? Transformation of wilderness into the good. 
governed, i.e., the human project. Enculturate in you is the word, was an earthquake, a storm, letting the crops grow, deity of crafts, mischief, sea water, lake water, intelligence, creation, a sheep like creature with a massive set of fangs, her harpooner of the world, all things made of his cot, return to the watery soup. It is true that different mindsets govern different kinds of practices, some more sustainable than others. But this story from indigenous peoples on the northern prairie, the universal cannibalism of the sea, of a female abduction by the deity and her rescue, that is meant to bring the buffalo, capital B, back to life, was presided once the herd got funneled over the cliff once they'd harvested what she could and left the, left the rest, a whole herd there to ride. This was sustainable with stone tools. I.e., the species never confronted the awareness that humans plague the place. The key idea, of course, being species, as that seems to be what 400 ppm means, what has been done its environment, the saddest legacy one can imagine. No hyperbole here. I might as well feed an exhaust pipe in through my daughter's window and make sure the inhaler is ready for the morning. But then what? Participatory action as a united front to keep homo from breaching twice the last threshold, four degrees, delineated in the World Bank report but my second thought is thoroughly pessimistic. The critical self-reflection, education, self-administered or not, the cultivation of empathy over and above morality and faith, all of what would be necessary too much for a united front to appear capable altering the social, the economic, organizations of industrialized and industrializing desires, states that drive global warming, personally I am, taking the approach of consume as little as possible, as possible was subjective. As I'm typing this on a fancy computer right now, I hate absolutes. There's a way to partake of certain fruits of civilization, always barbaric underneath, without crossing in to consumer culture, even ruining it as far as I can say consumerism was the roots of an inability and refusal. Moreover, consumerism as such was a mindset first and a behavior second, which raised an interesting situation in terms of justifying aesthetic priorities in writing and just so I returned to pessimism. The chances of preventing an immediately experienced mass scale environmental catastrophe. Apologies and I'm sorry. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Next up is Chuck Richardson. Chuck? This is called Lingering Below Paradises. Do not all charms flee philosophy, melting into shade in a love hut with cinders, residue, dust, be avant-garde in mission whilst others rust, a swan, a tendency behind the test, disjunction, materiality born in the cone, central Alberta, Buddhist, thinking, Walden, spoken often, a value reading her critical work called the 20th century dissolved collapsing transformed disruption devastation formed competition poetry and prose heightened attention to language permanent prominent use of metaphor the ex pectoralization of an object i presentation the truth subverse of ness a federal constitutional republic Impressively large, pregnant, advised by the vortex not to offer any further comment on the humming and the cortex. No one really knows who or what to commerce. 
stung bones reveal themselves via decomposition, when once marginalized poets write histories, a self-regarding borderline narcissism, arranging items to influence, to affect one or more senses, thoughts, feelings. Ted Hughes wears a headdress tresses in torment. Though not American himself, he was at least married to the American poet Sylvia Plath. His possible role or lack thereof in her suicide has proven controversial to many feminists and other freshman idealists who believe he now lives in a place of suffering and punishment in the afterlife, in the period between incarnations not unlike the Bardo plane, which could or perhaps should be a state of loss ruled by a death god who's pledged allegiance to the Republican Party platform. On to the pallid sick bay bed where she, dead to her last feeling, shed her eyes of planets dealing, approved with pillows, figures her head, aiming to improve analytical figures, approve mixing of politics with scholarship, disprove intolerance, misprove apologetics, reprove the abuse of students, to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA, the true nature of the Muslim Brotherhood, to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA, the Vidal Sassoon International Center, to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA, the systematic use of terror, to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA, 100 definitions to delegitimate, to delegitimate, to delegitimize <laughs> opponents to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA legitimize one's own use of force to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA the indiscriminate use of violence to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA against non-combatant apathetic to be listed a terrorist by Campus Watch USA sheep Campus Watch USA has a rather intense sense of dodging airtight abandon. A dripping syringe hits your arm's extension, extending your darkness into the white void. That's it. It's my, well, I'm very disappointed that Michael Basinski isn't here right now. He's supposed to read next, and apparently something got messed up. But to honor the great man's presence, I'm going to read a short little Mike Kaczynski poem. I love Michael Kaczynski. We've got Christina Marie Darling. Thank you for coming out today. Um, it's such an honor to read with you all. Um, the poem I'm going to read is called Palimpsest. Chapter One Within the House, an Odd Stillness. That was when she unlocked the door and began wandering the empty rooms. Her pearl earrings stood glistening beneath the nightstand. Chapter One. His appearance may be read as a culmination of several recurring motifs. A journey to the countryside, her descent into madness, and the jewelry box with its silver nameplate and tiny golden key. Chapter one, a yellow moon adrift as the windows darken. And before long, she whispered, I'll have framed a portrait of him for each wall of the house. She seemed to understand the necessity of the velvet curtain, its silk tassels and lavish golden trim. Chapter one, always begin by saying that this is not romanticism. 
In the work of Keats especially, we rarely encounter a clear-cut example of artifice. Like the artist's mind decaying amidst the nightingales and constellations, this was assumed to be real. And the letter, with its intricate flourishes and belabored epigraph, gave rise to the most startling numbness in every fingertip. Chapter 1. The portrait, like a letter, requires a subject. And only by considering the other, she thought, will I come to understand intention, its hazy yellow glow. Somewhere in the picture, a declaration. The door to the gallery groaning on its hinges. Chapter 1. Again the delicate glass on her pearl earring. Room after room of paintings in their tiny wooden frames. A series of odes in a strange language. Thank you. That was awesome. Next up, Dava Fader. from Frederico Garcia Lorca, and it's called Slit Tear Zest. And I keep hearing people saying, transformation, transformation, you would think it would be, I thought it would be hard to find poems about change, because I'm kind of apolitical, but then I guess you go and everything is about transformation, so it wasn't hard. So every poem in this has its first line from Garcia Lorca. This is, the moon nearly smothered. Press pass, wounds prepaid. Voluntary bloodletting. Catch it, shimmer, one hand into water. Weakness, confined to other half of a body's bird song. Insistent racketeering. See you later, sell you on this. Spring is a revelatory sickness of the eyes. Incoming petal projectile heavens. Wrong side of beds heaves her. Hailstorm manna. If you go for the end of things. Octopus blooming from window boxes, tin can teacup, as if any miracle will do. But you, cicada, die enchanted. Keep secrets, mirror, measures, can't come out, come out wherever you are, shimmer, castings, drapery, velvet moth holds all your wishing, and even that, fragrance, fratricide, Cloak of onion only makes you weep. Crust crystals, cyst eyes, glass bottle Tiffany's. Bumbles won't lie. Still in, was he a real boy before the blue fairy? A new suit and boots, pine for her. Locks to fit every key. And then this has its like other text is uh, the Wikipedia entry for antibiotic resistance. Corralling orifices, eyeless offerings, arrange themselves, legs, books, visage, miasma, mirage, unbidden, opportunistic bacteria resistance to reticence, payment, dutiful garden walk, beauty calcifications, checklist, scaled up aways, chalky residue dusted for prints, purpose, powder, centrifugal blood, can measure progress from diagnosis. Dipstick, doesn't she look pretty today? I can see you had relations with your husband last night. Ask me how I know. Fashionista, lab coat, specialist. White lies or answers in Latin. Acquisition of resistance. Genes from other bacterial species by horizontal gene transfer via conjugation, transduction, or transformation. Next up, David Hypnotic. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you for just 
Jess Buffalo for hosting this event and having us all here. I'm going to read a couple of revolutionary letters uh, by Diana Prima. Uh, Jess Buffalo helped us uh, do a fundraiser for her last year. She's been really sick. And these letters are still uh, pretty powerful, I think. They started back in 71. She's been updating them here and there. Revolutionary letter number seven. There are those who can tell you how to make Molotov cocktails, flamethrowers, bombs, whatever you might be needing. Find them and learn. Define your aim clearly. Choose your ammo with that in mind. It is not a good idea to tote a gun or knife unless you are proficient in its use. All swords are two-edged and can be used against you by anyone who can get them away from you. It is possible even on the East Coast to find an isolated place for target practice. Success will depend mostly on your state of mind. Meditate, pray, make love, be prepared at any time to die. But don't get up tight. The guns will not win this one. They are an incidental part of the action which we better damn well be good at. What will win is mantras, the sustenance we give each other, the energy, energy we plug into, the fact that we touch, share food, the Buddha nature of everyone, friend and foe, like a million earthworms tunneling under this structure until it falls. <laughs> Revolutionary letter number 32. Not Western civilization, but civilization itself is the disease which is eating us. Not the last 5,000 years, but the last 20,000, or the cancer. Not modern cities, but the city. Not capitalism, but ism. Art, religion. Once they are separate enough to be seen and named, named art, named religion, once they are not simply the daily acts of life which bring rain, bread, heal, bring the herds close enough to hunt, birth the children, simply the acts of song, the acts of power now lost to us these many years, not killing a few white men, will bring back power. Not killing all the white men, but killing the white man in each of us. Killing the desire for brocade, for gold, for champagne, brandy, which sends people out of the sun and out of their lives to create commodity for our pleasure. What claim do we have? Can we make on another's time, another's lifeblood? Show me a city which does not consume the air and water for miles around it. Mohendra Dara was a blot on the village culture of India. The cities of Egypt sucked the life of millions. Show me an artifact of city which has the power as flesh has power, as spirit of man has power. 1, one through 32, it might be one of the first explicitly anti war poems in Western literature, although I just thought of Lois Estrada, so I guess that's anti war as well. Uh, about the Roman Civil War. War worse than civil injustice given over to crime, we sing. A mighty nation, its own conqueror, sword plunged victoriously into its own guts. Kindred battle lines, tyrant's treaty broken, and the fight shaking the whole world with its rage. A crime in common, confusion of uniforms, eagle meets eagle, spear, spear. What madness! of citizens. Why such sword lust? Why offer Roman blood to barbarian folk? Does it please you to wage war with no chance of victory? How much of your blood's already gone to ground or spilled to sea? If you love it so much, why not put the whole world under Roman law before turning a gun on your own head? Look around, you've no lack of enemies. Now walls totter and half raised homes with no one guarding them. Perhaps some poor, sad wanders the urban wasteland. But Italy's barren fields lack hands for plowing. And only our own arms yielded the deep wound that leads to this death. Thanks. Thank you, David. That was awesome. And we're going to finish up the Blaze Box reading with Paul Hogan. Paul. Thank you. I have uh, uh, three short books to read. Um, they are in sequence, actually, in, the, in my book published by Blaze Box. Um, 
So I thought I would do these. They sort of uh, beg for reading on this occasion. The first one is talking a little bit about uh, the personal revolution as a model for the political revolution. It's called Winds on Some Days. Winds on some days bear remnants of calls to destruction, barely familiar tendrils of smoke not quite thick enough to choke, ash needing multiple blinks to clear out of reddening eyes, the rich, stifling lungful of mold dust grown decades in floors of rotted wood. Such winds trigger echoing acts, an urge to go through all rooms, every drawer to forcefully part from each trinket and page not read in memory, to finally tear down the old wall that carries no art, but has blocked out the light, curtailed the free flow of air. Purging alone isn't the point. It's a response to a call, an overwrought resonance with some distant disharmony that sets off the jump and wild swinging. No thought past now, past the wafting odor and dash of the call, only the blown back response. Tear it down, the hammer raised up, the minds fully locked on the call. Tear it down, beat, tear it down. The second uh, is called This War or Earthquake. Um, I suppose I would say it's uh, probably the future as aftermath. <laughs> By this time, bodies have been taken elsewhere. Dust rises up, dust falls, dust drifts sideways, smoldering. Sharp, then rumbling sounds quieted. People silent stare long minutes at layers of structure, generations of marks broken, leveled. Rivulets of black water or blood, veins of wire ripped out and bleeding whatever ran through them, horrific, it said, or senseless, or stunningly unfortunate. Descriptions from those who describe thick in the air like more waves of dust, the lights, the lifescapes that much more crushed. Revisions of generations after generations crushed. Nuance of grandparent, invention of child, crushed. And this talk about rebuilding? Fantasies. Like sprinkling magic water scooped from muddy streets and chanted over, we are one mass of thought, one point in time. We can throw up some shelter, the shakiest of foundations. What rises here at daybreak, seven generations out, might be considered a start by those to whom it mattered. And then the third, uh, I am a Vietnam era veteran. Uh, I enlisted in the Navy to escape Vietnam and uh, my war ended up being the Middle East. I was in uh, the Mediterranean for the Egypt and Israel War in 1973. That was my role, but I was in communication, so instead of teaching me how to kill, they taught me how to type. So uh, in teaching me how to type, they used uh, what is probably familiar to most people who've learned touch typing, the, the lines that you hear one of them is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, zero times. Anyway, the other one is the one that I'm using here. This is called Typing Drill. U.S. Navy A School 1972 restated 2011. Begin. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country again. Now is the time for all good men to come and be changed for their country. Again, now is the time for all good young men to learn to not question their country. Again, now is the time for all good young men to forget all they've learned since their childhoods. Again, 
now is the time for young men to learn to accept death as brother in arms. Again, now is the time for young men to witness what young men can do in their terror. Again, now is the time for men to surrender their faith in their moral directions. Again, now is the time for old men to sacrifice young men on altars of privilege. Again, now is the time for good men to die defending their brothers against countries. Again, now is the time for young men to swallow their aid is not much for their countries. Again, now is the time for all to stand up and demand that their countries stand down. Again, now is the time for everyone good to come to the aid of their countries. And final, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their countries. Drill complete, hands down. Thank you very much, Raymond Blazebox Books. And we've got a table set up over here, so if you care to buy a book, uh, come on over. Thank you very much.